haven't done it already, let's call the meeting to order and uh, let's jump right in. And hi, Chris, sorry to keep you waiting there, but this meeting's pretty much all about you because you're DPW and we save a whole, a whole day just for DPW. <laughs> 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 all right, so um, I guess we, uh, Linda, you probably have it. Yep, Linda puts it up and there then- we uh, go. And uh, Chris, if you don't mind, I'll let you take it away. Okay, good afternoon. Hey. So thank you very much for giving us uh, the opportunity to come before the finance committee. Uh, we're here for the, um, to discuss our budget. Uh, but um, I don't know if you want me to only talk about operating budget or you want me to talk on both or just to focus on the operating budget and give you the difference. Um, we're told to set up um, both level funded and level service budget. And um, I am here to if you look at it, they will have a couple of differences in terms of um, payroll and staffing changes, which also uh, might have, have, we have impact on the salary, the union uh, contract. So we, um, at DPW, our current fiscal year, which I'm sure you have um, the current fiscal year budget, we are running very negative on many aspects because as at the beginning of when we're preparing FY21 budget, uh, due to the pandemics, uh, the town had a lot of uh, challenges. And so they gave us, uh, we took a budget that basically we knew from day one that it wasn't a feasible budget for the services that we are required to render to the people of Hadley. So if you look, and we've been trying to keep ourselves um, kosher, or for lack of a better word, uh, do the, the minimum it, it should take to get a job done, but we are still running very high in deficit. And we still have a few months to go. And so that brings us to FY22 budget. Now, when we're told that we have to put together a level service budget, also a level funded budget. We didn't, we, we didn't know how to make it level funded other than to put together what we currently have and also uh, changes in salary due to, as I said earlier, due to contracts, union obligations. And also we have um, the, a movement of personnel. Some of, we have some personnel who we move from uh, um, wages, we move them to the professional salary line because of their new position as foreman. We also um, had um, just hired um, a, a, a administrative assistant, but uh, administrative coordinator to replace uh, Sharon Gifford, who, who, re who retired in January at, at a very low scale. We also hired uh, a part-time administrative assistant. So those changes reflect on the salary scales. Other than that, everything else, we, we just took what we are currently having as our level fund. Uh, so basically, if you ask me, which I, I would recommend to the finance committee to please, we are possible, we cannot afford level funded budget, because if, the, if that's what is gonna happen, we find ourselves more in, in, more in, for lack of better word again, more in, the, we're digging more hole for ourselves because currently we have a lot of issues. We have a lot of road repairs. We have a lot of um, trees to, to, to bring down because they are hazardous trees. They are dangerous trees. We have, um, storm water to take care of, a lot of culverts to fix. We also have a lot of uh, issues on both water, in our water environment, uh, water, water, water valves, 
hydrants. The DEP requirement for us to take care of the two water tanks we have, both in Mount Holyoke and Mount Warner. We also have electrical issues, and these are big, big items that um, level funded will be will not be able to uh, handle. If we go to level services, uh, that is where I think um, I know that there's financial issues all over the all over the country, especially the town. But to be a, to be minimally for minimal service to be able to for us to be able to produce provide minimal service, we we need this finance committee to take a look a uh, critical lens to take a look at our level services. Uh, there is nothing much there that is increased other than some of the negative we have right now. We were told that uh, we might be able to get some funding. Uh, that was at last year's uh, discussion. So, like I said, some of those repairs build our buildings. We, yes, we have a couple of new buildings, but we don't have uh, uh, the price to maintain them is very high, especially because of COVID-19, which has come has created uh, a different method of cleaning and also cost. And the more we, the more we go into a, a, a place where the public is now allowed to use those buildings, for example, the library or the council of aging, the senior center, even town hall, uh, if it will require more frequent cleaning, it will require more um, sanitizing. And uh, so it also the safety complex. So these are the things that are, are shaping up in our cost. We've also been given um, Zotaka Park to maintain. Zotaka Park is under the park and rec, but for some reason, um, issues came up yeah, about a year ago. And so we are, it became a public uh, issue or nuisance. And the select board was kind enough to take it over and bring it to our attention. So DPW maintains that. That's also expensive to maintain. Uh, so that wasn't part of our um, assignment in the past. So those are the things that, um, that why I will, I'm recommending that the committee take a look at um, our uh, level services budget as opposed to the uh, level funded budget. If, uh, if the committee wants to discuss capital budget, I will take a pause and hear from the committee and see where we go. Then I can answer whatever questions you may have. Okay. Uh, one of the things I'd like to uh, which you mentioned, but I think maybe I could get a list to make it a little bit easier for me to see or understand it is the, um, and, and maybe just um, we can list it down below is what you mentioned is who left, the, like what who's, who's your staff? You mentioned this one left and they were paid higher. This one came in and they were lower Then you had some another adjustment. So you had a lot of movement and a lot of adjustments. I wanted to just actually see the uh, the the breakdown a little bit better than because it's, it's kind of hard for me to follow on this sheet. So I didn't know if there was a way to just see that a little bit more. Um, I, I know that we moved some of the hours over from the highway and we moved them over to the assistant treasurer. Um, so we did some adjustments there. We, you know, like you said, you had people that have been long-term to short-term, so there's adjustments there, but there's so many adjustments. If you, if we could have it spelled out to us just a little bit more, it would, I, I would find it a little bit more helpful. Yes, I, 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 would, I would be glad to do that. We have, we, um, for example, uh, let me begin with the um, administrative assistant. Uh, in the past, we have 40 hours and 37 and a half. And now we have only 22 and a half hours, three days of an administrative assistant. We then, the two days you talked about is the other two days that uh, this position works for the treasurer. So that also uh, reduces our cost. When Sharon retired, 
she was uh, making a very high number. Now we have that position was in uh, that position was uh, one one third to half of what she was doing was redistributed to the department, including myself, uh, the field superintendent, and some of, and the water staff took some of the what Sharon was doing, basically the function of um, water superintendent, and the technical aspect and uh, public relations and uh, water management. The uh, office administrative folk things that she was doing in the office relating to coordinating all the divisions in DPW, because in DPW, all the divisions do not have clerical staff, we only have a central location. So we, so we talking to the town administrator and the select board, a, a new position was created named the public works admin coordinator position. So covering both administrative and uh, coordinating on uh, matters relating to the public, uh, relating to gathering data, um, also relating to uh, issues that concerns um, uh, inspection and scheduling, also doing administrative assistant jobs so, so that that reduced the cost of that position where that Sherry uh, was holding before. Now, we also had this administrative assistant position, which is instead of 37 and a half hours, five days a week, we reduced that to three days a week. So the, we, we saved the town over $10,000 of which the select board um, acknowledged recently. The, we also moved personnel, for example, this same assist, assistant, uh, administrative assistant position. In the past, all, all, their, their, all their funding came from uh, the highway budget. But currently now we have distributed the funding to cover both highway, water, and sewer. This way we're able to not only uh, have the funding, but also to actually spread out the, the cost because this position serve all the divisions. We have a DPW general foreman. This is a position that the select board gave to us partly because we, uh, we needed to have a complete um, uh, staff, staff scheduling. DEP requires us to always produce a minimum staff staffing of both water and sewer. And in the course of the inspection that was done a few months before the pandemics, we, they thought we were under, understaffed in um, wastewater. So we, so we recommended to them and uh, I brought it before the select board that, uh, so we, we have a general foreman who we can use not only in highway, but also in sewer if we need to. So part of the staffing, uh, position was that was how that position was created, and we took this individual out of the union, so that uh, all the union um, contract obligations is not on this position. And so the the individual was moved to professional services, professional salary. So that also uh, saved the town some money in terms of the union contract. The, the this position is a non-union position. Is a 40 hour position. Uh, we happen to be somebody from within. So the promotion was more like a promotion scale. So they saved the town a lot of money. And we, uh, so we, uh, so that's how we created, that's how the, that movement happened. Also, we had a position in water division to be filled. So we promoted, somebody moved from highway to water division. This individual has been in highway for it's a senior employee. The salary was already high. So when that position was vacant in highway, we just hired a, an individual who at the minimum entry level. So that also saved the town a lot of money. That was where that's the movement, under movement. We were not we our mechanic retired or resigned. And so an individual from highway, senior employee, also moved to the mechanic position. And so we replaced that individual with a labor 
high wheel level, again, at the minimum entry level. And so, you, so, that, so that these are the scales that you, if you look at the, 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 num the movement, that is where the numbers are. But in terms of the, in terms of overall, we still have some increase because as I said earlier, contract obligations. Even with these new individuals, they are part of the union. So the, and so we, and then we also have a lot of senior individuals who have been here. And so both based on the union obligations, there are some things that um, we just have to meet those obligations. So, and uh, at an expensive rate, like the longevity. And also we have uh, various um, pucks, uniform, shoes, and uh, licensing that the town has to pay for these individuals. I'll be glad to um, send, send, send the names and um, if, you, if, if the finance committee needs the names or if you want detailed breakdown, I'll be glad to send it. Linda, go ahead. Yeah, um, we did um, just, just, I know it's hard to find, see from here and what isn't necessarily uh, clear from seeing just the highway budget is so many people from Chris on down through the ranks work in some capacity for all three. So a lot of these figures are one third of a person. So, and then you're gonna see a similar thing happening on water and in sewer. And we agree that it's confusing. Um, so Carolyn and Joan and I and Chris and Jessica Perrin uh, at DPW all kind of got together after Chris had put together his, uh, his two budgets and had this, have this huge spreadsheet with everybody's name and rate and hours and then the columns for water, sewer, and highway. So we actually did spend quite a bit of time on this. I think Chris gave a good overview, but, um, but I, I just wanted to um, let you know that we've all spent a, a bit of time on it and they're, just not, they're not just numbers there. It's something that you know, we struggled to understand. And I think now, I think Carolyn would agree, we're, we're at, we ended up being good with it at the end, but it, it is a complicated situation at uh, DPW when you've got people who are part-time, full-time, and then maybe working all for water, all for sewer, all for highway, a third of each. So um, that's why we had the huge DPW spreadsheet. And it's not something that we would want to show or share on, online because it's got every individual's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of personal information on it. But um, I mean, that's available, but I also wanted to assure you that we did spend that kind of time with it. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is uh, union union increases are not here. At the bottom where it says the town administrator raised salaries by the COLA of one and a half percent, that was just on, Carolyn, wasn't that just on non-union people? <laughs> Usually it can't shut me up. Um, <laughs> yes, but I think I'm very confident that that number is going to be consistent with the unions but we didn't put it in right we didn't put in the union we have not so there will be an increase for the union portion of the percentage so that's something we have to account for somehow or other before the budget's fully approved so i have a note to get that in there one way or other maybe just a single line with the increases we'll figure that out so um I don't know down at, at some point I, I whether I touch base with you Linda afterwards or something but um I mean I could just go with it because you said it's good but I can't say I did my due diligence and really looked at it because I don't understand it it's too complicated for me okay um, yeah, it's too just, much it, I just don't feel comfortable with it uh, you know. and, and, Again, I don't mind when I said I do, about sharing it. I don't mean sh I, I don't think we mind sharing it with the finance committee. I just didn't want to put it on the screen. <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I, I just don't want to say that I really did my due diligence, looked okay. at it, and understood it because it's just complicated. 
and, and it always has been complicated, yep. but it feels like it's a, even more so this year. <laughs> <laughs> Only because he's got the things go, you know, people, so many, so many movements, yeah. um, you know, long-term people moving and, and going from in different departments moving. And, and, you know, when I thought, yeah. you know, DD stuff was tough, this is 10 times harder than DD's. <laughs> and it could happen again next year too, right, Chris? I mean, this is just yeah. the way, Good. the way it is. Well, and, and if I can just say the in I think I, it's definitely confusing, um, but one of the things that we did was exactly what I've heard um, the select board ask for and the finance committee is where can you be more efficient? Where can you share staff? Where can you um, reallocate responsibilities to more appropriate staff? And you will see after, after we can, Linda and I will figure out how to make that presentation work for you guys. But that's exactly what we did in that we didn't just replace a position at the full amount of hours. We sat with that person who was moving on to Sharon's position and said, what do you think this position's like? You know, can this be a part-time position? And she agreed because she had come in and made things much more efficient a few years ago. And it, it became, a, it really was a part-time position. And so that's where we said, well, the treasurer's department is short on support. Let's re, let's keep you know take that person that we rehire um, and ha, p keep them part time at DPW and not increase hours um, for the treasurer. It's just reallocating those hours. So I just want to share with you some of the philosophy that was behind some of what you'll see. Oh, I think it's a great idea, and I'm not down in the philosophy at all. I mean, it's to share resources and to help each other, and for people to move from department to department. That's great. I just, um, I only see the one line and without the, this person moved to this person or this went to this, I can't follow it. And then next year down the road, or if I ever have to refer back to it, I'm not going to know what's what. It, it, it's just needs more explanation. Um, just like the others, that's all. So, um, I'm, I'm just gonna let's that we can let's move on because I'm, I'm guessing it's all been reviewed and you you know what you know what's going on and then down the road you can share with us but it's all fine I would say let's let's keep going with it okay and when we'll get that spreadsheet together and and send it to you Amy and then you can Great. figure out what you do uh, what you need to do thanks we'll give you a simple one next okay Chris <laughs> yes Oh, All can right. I just, I'm sorry, but before we move, can we just, I, I wanted to ask him one other question on this other one. And that was, had to do with the vegetation that we, that you increased quite a bit, but yeah. I know that we decreased the vegetation quite a bit on the last one um, because of the pandemic. And that was one of the items that we did hit hard. Yeah. How, how much are you over on that? We are currently over almost sixty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Oh, and 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 why why you know that's more than what we've ever spent before. Why is it so high? Is it just because of the storms? I know you've taken down quite a few trees. Yes, we have. Uh, we had two major storms that, and uh, it took down a lot of hazardous trees. In one of the storm, we were very blessed that uh, we didn't have house fire. Uh, so that created a big cost for us. Uh, we had to bring in a crane to add to the tree. And um, so, and, and we also did a lot in-house from the DPW staff. So that's, that's why it's expensive. And we are still dealing with the, the lingering effect of that, those two storms. Because if you, if you see, um, one of the reasons why, as you may be surprised, even with that 60,000 plus, we are still blessed in the sense that Eversource helped us for a tune of over $8,000 worth of tree removal, including the one across from the bank. Mm -hmm. and so if, if we have added that, that could have added more to our deficit. We still have a, a, a in, in hardly, uh, we have good, we have trees and I happen to be a tree warden. I love trees. But unfortunately, we didn't have a good program to maintain those trees. 
And so we are paying the price in part for yesterday's. Uh, and so today is more difficult because we don't have a forestry department division. We don't have a, a crew to go around the town to prune the trees, make, uh, maintain the trees. So we have all these huge trees that are all in, in dangerous locations. And so we are basically taking a risk, picking up piece by piece, assuming that hopefully um, there won't be any major disaster. So, but everyone that we see along the uh, pop popular route or next to home or sidewalks, especially on West Street and Middle Street, we have to take, take them down because um, it's cheaper to take them down than God forbid um, other disastrous issues. And we still have a lot of them on our list. Okay. Can you tell me where the money, what, what are we going to do with that money? Where is it coming from? I, uh, sure. I will leave that to the town administrator, the finance committee, and the select board. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, but based on, based on what we have and based on history, we figured out uh, that the, the finance committee took a lot of money from us last time. That you might take a you might take a, a critical look at this situation. We have a lot of big uh, heavy trees that need some attention in town. We are also we're not even asking for money to plant new trees. If you notice, I never because the ones we have we, we are we are in we're not even able to take good care of them right now. So I at my level I don't know where the money will come from other than um, making my. Um, professional recommendation that the town should take a look at it. We need to take down many trees. We need to uh, clean up. Also, we need to plant trees where possible. I know the Tree Shade Committee is um, making effort to get some donations of trees. And uh, I told them that that is a good thing, but it's not the 100% because we're getting trees to plant is a good thing, but we also need to maintain those trees. And so that is the second part, which uh, has not been answered. So in terms of DPW, we are doing our best to uh, prune many trees right now. We also sometimes rent um, lift from rentals, but some of the big trees are not something we need to, we can rent any lift. We need a, a, a major tree truck. We also need um, to dispose those woods. Uh, residents have been helpful. They take some of the woods. But because uh, some of them are huge, only very few residents can handle these huge trees. And so we also have to now dispose them. And it's the street company that has to help us dispose some of them. Because if you look at all over the town, we see pile of huge trees. We leave them there for some time, believing that people will help us. And residents have tried, uh, farmers who have big space have tried to help us. And then the rest, we, as a town, we have to find a way to dispose them. Okay. Thank you. So, sorry to have brought you back. I just had that one question and I didn't want to oh. leave the page. <laughs> no, that's fine. When you said move on, I thought you meant the next budget. I, you, yeah. you meant not down the page. That's fine. Can I, can I just ask a question on the trees? Yeah. Are we, are we contracting out to someone or is that our people who are pruning? Uh, our people, we do prune, but we contract to someone because we don't have the equipment to prune right. the big trees, yes. Okay, thank you. All set? Yep, I'm good. Thank you. Anybody else? We're all good? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, Chris. Uh, snow and ice. Yes, snow and ice is. Um, Usually, um, an area where the mother nature detect de uh, tend to detect how deficit will reflect on this. Uh, we've been very blessed in this last storm. We didn't have uh, we, we didn't have what I call major New England storms. So we the cost remains the same. It's an area where we are allowed to deficit spend in part because of we cannot control the how nature will operate with the snowstorm. But other than that, we um, I requested the select board to allow us to have um, to go out 
and get a, a contract for snow, a snow plan, um, in part because we don't have enough personnel for the area we need to cover. But the select board approved that we should have um, individuals who want to sign up. Uh, but we, again, it was a risk because we were blessed. We were able to manage this storm. Uh, nobody in town answered the call except uh, one of the select, select board member who answered the call. And, uh, but we never uh, called him to come and plow in part because we didn't get to the point where we needed somebody outside uh, the government. We have uh, an individual from the fire division, fire department that we, we used a couple of times. Other than that, we, we made up this year because we didn't buy too much salt because we had enough salt to begin the, the season from the previous fiscal year. So overall, we carried over the same, the same budget in part because that is how, uh, even if we have the deficit spend, uh, we will, but so far not, not, nothing changed much on this uh, snow and ice budget. So you're saying you didn't have to definite de deficit spend this year at all, correct? Yes. Okay, and how about, can you tell me, do you know the last time we did have to deficit spend? Yes, the pre, uh, FY20, we had a we had no storm. Usually the storm may not be heavy, but the frequency requires us to bring guys and based on union contract, uh, it's very expensive. You bring in a guy to spend an hour in town, we we'll pay him four hours. We we'll bring, and then we, and it, uh, also FY20, the cost for diesel was higher than FY21. And we, our trucks, they, they run in diesel. So those are the kind of things that, uh, and salt was also expensive. So, yes. Yes. Was, were, we, were we short a lot in 20? No, we weren't short a lot, no. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Questions? No? Okay, Chris, if you want to keep going, that's, that works. Yes, I, Linda is helping me out. <laughs> Thanks, Here Linda. Here we go. There's your street lights. Thanks. Yeah, the street lights uh, are almost like, almost like what we have with snow and ice. We currently, um, before, the, before the pandemics, the select board has been um, authorized us to take a look at um, um, how we can the street lights, how uh, we can change them, or we're working with um, Eversource, and uh, how we can change them to LED again to save cost. And also, uh, in the course of that discussion, the town was also looking at how we can make uh, be a green community, and the other events overtook that. So the light at the parking lot at the town hall. Uh, Eversource changed that light to LED again to, to show the select board how it will look like. And we also installed one on uh, River Drive uh, where a homeowner was also complaining that uh, so, the, so, so far nothing has changed in that line item. Um, recently, Eversource has approached the town uh, to see how we can also uh, look at to, to do an audit in uh, all the town buildings and uh, see how we can save in the cost of uh, the energy. Uh, currently, I don't think they have submitted the report to the town administrator. The individual, to my knowledge, has not submitted the report. Yes. So, so the light uh, budget remains the same. Can I ask, can I ask Chris, is there, is there a reason we can't take the electric, the uh, street light line and put it on to the DPW budget? Is there a reason that needs to be separate like snow and ice does? No, I, to my knowledge, no. I, I, I think probably this is how David Nixon set it up. And he has been like this for the years. I, I, it could be, it could be done. I don't think he's. Uh... Yeah. I, I think actually I, 
I think uh, if I recall the history correctly, we're talking decades ago, the first time uh, when we were having uh, budget cuts and there was a threat to cut the uh, streetlights. And there was a, in order to counter that, it was put on his own budget so that when people voted to have streetlights, then the selectmen couldn't turn them off to save money. I, but if, I, if that's the criteria, uh, <laughs> I, will, I will say I agree with that. <laughs> They want right. to cut and they will. <laughs> but I, I leave that to, to Caroline. I, she, she makes that kind of final decision on that. All right. Well, maybe we won't touch it yet then. <laughs> we ready? Ready. Yes. Oh, Biggie. The sewer. Yes. Now, I, I have sewer and water, they're enterprise funds, but they're right in here with, as part of the mix. So let me get this so a little bit bigger there, unless you want to see the bottom line. There. I think uh, is that, can you see that or should I make it bigger? A, a little bit. Big Need it bigger? Yeah. Okay. Then we won't see the whole budget at once, but. Yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I get the yes, account number the, in. Yeah. There. Okay. This the sewer budget is, for lack of a better word, is a budget that requires a serious attention of, uh, and the town has been looking at this budget even before my time. So currently we are operating a very tight ship. We also have, uh, in terms of the personnel, um, the cost for, they are all union em employees. We, we have two individuals who, um, for lack of a better word, the, you might question that, that creates the high salary or high wages because of their longevity and their rate. We have three employees there. One of them is re relatively new. Again, part of that movement in DPW, we moved him from water to sewer. And so that helped us to bring the the budget as low as possible. The we have um, a lot of infrastructure in the sewer th that is aging, which um, we've been requesting for various sewer rate increase or for uh, take a, or a critical look into our sewer system. Uh, it's a it's a utility, and so we also earlier I mentioned that the DPW general foreman. And the field superintendent and myself, we are part of the the um, scheduling or uh, the manpower sheet that we give to DEP, because only the three individuals DEP is not satisfied that. So we so in other words, we can use uh, the foreman. Uh, we also can use uh, the myself or the field superintendent. And our salary, one third of my salary comes from sewer. One third also comes from, um, from salary of um, the first superintendent comes from sewer. Also the DPW foreman. And as I said earlier, the, our, the assistant, the administrative assistant, we're also making sure that we, we, we generate a few hours, even if it's eight hours from sewer in terms of salary. So, but, we have a lot of engineering work to do in part because it's part of the DP requirement, testing, lab testing, water, chemicals, different things that we, we buy um, with the level funding. Uh, we have basically the last current budget, we are already in deficit in many of them. So some of them are costs that we cannot, we cannot uh, postpone. Our system is an old aged equipment. Many of them, the parts are not easily available. So that cost uh, of repairs. And so it's one of those things that uh, we are facing in sewer. But the main issue that is affecting us heavily is the, the fact that, uh, which I, I think Linda may know better than me on this, the fact that uh, we don't have we don't have a, a, a rate resource where we can 
we can fund the sewer issues. We have a lot of pipes, sewer pipes in the ground that we are trying to um, maintain. We, we have flushed them, we have known them, but some of the pipes requires, uh, we, we are not ready, ready, we're not digging the ground to take them out, but it requires what we call putting a sleeve. That means putting another pipe into an old pipe so that it keeps that old pipes stable and uh, becomes uh, relatively for another couple of years. Also, it helps us in the fact that we have big trees all over the town. Tree roots are impacting on these pipes. And so those are the type of costs that we are not able to adequately catch up in terms of sewer. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And does everyone on uh, do everyone understand that it's an enterprise fund and the the fees cover the sewer fees cover the sewer budget and the water fees cover the water budget. Um, and I sent you reports on where they stand um, earlier this week. So we have done some work, um, Susan and, and Dan, I know we're on there, but they've done some work on making some changes and working with select board to, to see about getting enough, a little bit more money over onto the sewer side rather the sewer side rather than the water enterprise side because the water was doing um, so much better. And I think they were fair and appropriate adjustments that sort of kick this can, uh, it kicks the can down the road a little bit more because it's not a great time to be raising rates. So. So but, did we end up raising the rates on the sewer? I thought we were, or did we never do it? It's on the table. So it's not, has still not have been done. So the last time we raised a rate was how long? 10 years ago, 12 years ago? I think so. That was before my time. So it must be maybe five, seven years ago or 10 years ago. We did a small increase um, in 19, but not enough to make any, any type of difference. All right. And then at one point we were taught, we talked about, you know, our, so that's on the table to be voted on again to raise the sewer rates. Plus at one time we did talk about when they changed the billing, um, and Sue could probably uh, uh, go to this, um, they changed it from the quarterly to the uh, semi-annually, where then, the or back the other way around. Yeah, and then I think it had to do with the amount, what was it, the flow or whatever, and then when we adjusted it to the different pay and taxes, that wasn't necessarily adjusted properly. Does that make sense to you, Sue? Um, they ch they wanted it quarterly uh, to improve revenue flow, um, and it really didn't improve revenue flow. But um, yeah, uh, what we are what the select board agreed to this time around is uh, a ten dollar infrastructure fee added to every bill. Um, and that will help with our infrastructure costs. The select board as water and sewer commissioners um, then can decide whether to use it for sewer infrastructure or water in infrastructure. You know, we've got Route 9 coming up that we need to uh, find money so that we can save money uh, by jumping on uh, while they have Route 9 open, uh, we can replace um, infrastructure there, so. Okay, yeah. Paul? I have a yeah, question. Uh, oh, sorry. Can you just clarify on every bill that's once a year or every bill that's sent out? Every bill. So so if you're, what do we bill? Four times a year? Yes. Right. So $40 a year per. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My I mean, question is, are we allowed to just levy that or does that have to go before the town to get approval? And also if we were to raise the sewer rates, does that need town approval? It does not. Um, uh, the select board as water and sewer commissioners can raise the rates. They do uh, rate hearings. 
um, and make their decision based on that. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so uh, I get we can, unless anyone else has questions, I say let's move on. We all sure. know that the sewer is in trouble and you know, we've had to, is something we need to keep an eye on and focus on, but it's really something that the select board has to get involved with too, to do more with the raising of the rates, so. Okay. We're done on sewer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So water is also an enterprise fund because uh, every household gets a water bill. Um, there's a larger uh, pool of money that were larger contributions to this similarly sized budget is it was a little higher. Um, but um, so it's, it has been accumulating in, in both cases on the on the enterprise funds, the ex, if there's any extra in the year, it stays in what's called the water reserve fund or the sewer reserve fund. So that's how we get through some lean years with uh, when the sewer uh, revenues of, for the year don't quite cover the budget, we draw from the sewer reserve, same with the water. But what the reserves are really supposed to be for is we do actually spend that money in town meetings from time to time. So water has done a, has been easier for all water to uh, accumulate a reserve fund for use at town meetings. Um, but we did dip into the dip into the water a bit in in this last uh, adjustment that was done, as Susan was explaining, the sh a shifting of expenses from uh, the water. Uh, shifting of invoicing uh, so revenues are going to go be directed more towards sewer than water so it's not going to be quite um as well off as it was year to year but um it has really helped with the solution and, and water is still doing okay so there you go chris uh yes the um the water division and water i'm sorry water division um we also uh if you look at the professional salary uh, because of the retirement of uh, sharing and also the way we uh, took some of the job as I, I alluded earlier and distributed within amongst ourselves. Uh, we have the, the enterprise was able to save some money. Uh, we also have uh, the administrative staff that when we have the money coming from various divisions of the department. And so we have a very low um, in terms of compared to the current FY21 budget, a uh, savings over there. Uh, water is not in a, in a die hard situation like um, sewer, in part also because a few years ago, the select board gave us a, a little bit of increase, just as um, Sue said earlier. But water also have some challenges. Um, we have um, two major water tanks, storage tanks, and they both need immediate attention. And so, uh, so, and I'm sure probably you've been, you are aware of these situations. So when you look at the numbers in water, we also have a lot of aged pipes and uh, we've been having a uh, water main bricks recently all over the place. Even when we begin to do flushing, which is required by law to make sure the pressure, is the, most of our pipes right now, because they are aged and they are all uh, tuberculated pipes, it create, uh, they are not able to handle minor pressure. And so we have these uh, frequent water main breaks. And so we are attempting to fix them, but um, it will require a major capital expenditure. We have an area, the area of South Maple, or where the, the whole neighborhood needs to be looked at. Again, we have not addressed that. The, we are, the only thing that WARA is able to look at is this Route 9 project. WARA is in a, in a better standing than sewer, but I'm grateful that the town is looking at both of them at the same time because of the opportunity that uh, mass highways coming and uh, it will be, so we're taking advantage of the fact that they are opening the ground and they are doing most of the um, contractor work so that we can do some work on that, on both water and sewer on Route 9. But um, 
not too much. We've been trying to use sometimes our highway staff to do some water jobs like the tree, tree and um, trench work because we only have, um, currently we have um, four staff in water. And we just had the fourth one recently, which I said earlier, moved from highway to water. And so the rest of the rest things in water are stable. We are just asking that uh, the union and uh, also materials cost will not allow us to sustain it based on level funding. But so other than that, uh, I don't have much. Water is one of the best, is the best division that we have in terms of funding. Thanks. I don't see a whole lot of changes either from in here. So um, I don't have any additional questions for you on this, unless anybody else does. Okay. What I say is, as I said, it's one of it's the, it's our best division in terms of. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, here we go. Building maintenance. There you go. <laughs> the one you've been waiting for. Uh, yeah. I apologize for my laughing. It just, uh, yeah, building maintenance is a challenge. For lack of a better word. <laughs> uh, it's a very big challenge because um, FY20, we, we met, we sat down with uh, uh, David Nixon, the then town administrator. We also met at various times before the pandemic came up. Uh, and uh, we requested for a couple of um, manpower and equipment to maintain. At that time, we we're looking for, you know, the library was coming online, the council on aging was coming, also the fire, the new fire station, plus the uh, safety complex, which is a 24 hour complex. And then we have the town hall, uh, which is an uh, I don't I it's an historical building because of the age, but and so it require and also you see uh, the traffic to the town hall. So and it's the seat of government. So we so we requested for a couple of things, which are the long run we didn't get. I only have one staff who is assigned to all these buildings. So many times I have to take my highway employees to assist him. Uh, we are not doing the best we could do in in these buildings. And now COVID-19 came al along, it becomes more complex. Uh, and if you look at our current budget, we run a lot of deficit, both uh, in F FY20 to even to FY21, because at the time uh, COVID-19 came aboard, uh, the way of cleaning these locations became very expensive. And so we didn't have a contract. We had to have an emergency contract and it was very costly. But currently now we have a contractor who is doing the cleaning, but at the same time, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not cheap. And it's a, a short term contract, which, which ends at the end of this fiscal year. We don't know how FY22 will look like, but if it's based on what uh, I'm seeing where the library is at, people are now being allowed to come to the library. The council and agent are beginning to allow groups. And I'm sure uh, very soon the select board will be having meetings there. So more traffic. Uh, it's going to be expensive to meet the CDC requirements. Plus the landscaping and the snow plowing and the maintenance of these uh, locations. Then you have to factor in the Zotaka Park, as I said earlier. So these are the things why, if you look at our budget, it doesn't make, it doesn't, it doesn't add up in terms of the, the responsibility and also the numbers. So we are in a very die hard. Again, level funding cannot help us in this part of the budget. I don't see anything in here, you know, just from what I can see on the sheet, <clears throat> there's nothing like 
since we're at the senior center, uh, I see the senior center exterior maintenance. That makes sense. Uh, you have nothing in there for interior maintenance. Uh, do we have contracts or different things such as, um, you know, if something like a regular contract that you might have, so periodic checks, such as for the fireplace or something like that, uh, where they come and clean it once a year or do things like that. Do we, what, what do we do with those? We have, we are currently, we are a little bit uh, blessed in the sense that we have, uh, uh, the building is still under warranty on many of the items in the interior. For example. So we are taking advantage of that. We have a, we have, um, we have a contractors, um, the various um, part of the, part of the um, construction and um, we have at least a year on various items there that requires uh, um, warranty and they also few of them are being looked looked into by uh, Maya which is a town insurance company but it's not going to kick in until after the warranties so we are also taking a risk there in the sense that um, we don't have plan B as a town so you're right there's nothing there in the interior other than we are taking advantage of the fact that uh, we still have warranty, and then some of the, the building uh, is, is not yet completely open to the public, but now it's beginning to be open. We also have, um, for the exterior, we are doing those maintenance ourselves, that's why we have some money there. So it's a general um, issue, not to lay in the council on aging, the library, the same thing, the new fire station, the same thing. Okay. So the exterior for the uh, public safety. Um, yes, the interior for, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just looking to see. So nothing for the interior for public safety, but you have 21,000 for the exterior of public safety. Yes, and even, that is, uh, even in our current budget, they are already neg negative. Okay. What, what is it that's so uh, for the exterior? Is it just mowing? What I, or what it just a thought? Just don't understand. Can you tell me a little bit what that covers? It covers uh, it covers the asphalt, the parking lot, the drainage. It covers um, any uh, damage. For example, we if you we we've been there for the past uh, couple of days fixing their parking lot. It's all broken with asphalt and their tonnage is $72 a ton. And so, and we frequently do that there. Uh, we also, um, if the, the exterior buildings, couple of carpentry work, uh, which is well managed by our building maintenance foreman. Uh, so those are the things that takes those money. And then in the winter months, we have a contractor that comes in at night to help um, Keep the dry the um, the, the uh, sidewalk possible in case of emergency. We are not there, so so that's that's so those are the things that um, takes the money. Okay. We have, we have sometimes we may need to do other miscellaneous work. Okay. Um. Does anyone else have any? So you, as for the library though, you did put, the, the library was one of the only ones and the North Hadley Hall Fire Station. Okay, so North Hadley Hall Fire Station, you put in for the interior, but you did not put for exterior. Yes. Okay. Again, it, it, we, um, the, the, um, the, they still have some money, and they uh, and they think that uh, they will be covered for this fiscal year that is that we are working on F22. But again, we hope there's no emergency. But as I said earlier, 
most of these things, the budget, uh, it doesn't add up in, in a proper sense because we don't have plan B. We just yeah. take advantage of the fact that there are new buildings. But uh, my hope is that um, the, these new buildings, the town will allow us to properly maintain them so that they don't, they don't go south like the previous ones. Okay. Yeah, some of these numbers, uh, I think it's something and maybe because we're lucky that our buildings are new on some of these. So right now we have some time, but then afterwards, I think we're going to have to come up with another plan. Yes. Because these don't seem to look right to me. <laughs> Not in good shape, these numbers. Uh, looks like we don't have, we're going to have to come up with an idea of something. No. Okay. Does anybody else want to comment on any of these numbers for the building maintenance? No? Okay, we can uh, keep moving then. Yeah, we have the cemetery. Again, the cemetery is um, it's a little bit like the build the buildings and grounds, except that um, because of the nature of uh, law, we have some perpetual fund which uh, we can't touch some of them except we go through the cemetery committee. And the cemetery committee has also been very active with the CPA funds to do some cemetery work, but the day to day uh, maintenance. And um, again, it's the same individual that we have as one, one man show in the building and grounds. So we basically um, sub subsidize the buildings and grounds and cemetery with highway employees when we need to do work. And uh, again, the, one of the good things about the cemetery also, uh, because we don't have personnel to do the, the groundwork, we have a contract with, to, to bring in um, a landscaping individual to come in to for spring cleaning and uh, also to um, to help us two or three times in a year. The rest of the times we DPW does so that has helped us to keep the cemetery going. Um, but we still have uh, a long way to go because if you look at the cemetery, some of the cemetery roads need some some repairs. Some of the gates, some of the um, so, but the in terms of the um, historical nature of the cemeteries, some of the uh, monuments and uh, the cemetery committee is working on that with um, CPA. So, but the general daily maintenance is where we are. The number hasn't changed much. Okay. 